A special thank you to our main sponsor of the channel, Squarespace. More on that later in the video. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. Today's video is all about some of the shop's pretties that are in. And similarly, next week's video is going to be some of the uglies because I know you guys love the uglies in my shop. So for the pretties today, we have a mix. We have a little bit of philodendron, some skindapsis, some syngonium, a little bit of monstera. There is a nice little blend in there. Not all of these are rare either. Literally not all of these are rare. These are just things I, I walked around and I was like, oh, that's looking good. Or, oh, I'm really liking that. Oh, I forgot I had that. That kind of thing. So without further ado, Let's just get started. If I seem like I'm shouting, by the way, it's because it's raining a lot in the unit and I'm sure my noise cancelling will work just fine. But at the time of recording, I can't tell. So I'm kind of trying to shout over it. So apologies. Right, let's get a plant. Right, the first plant I would like to show you that I was kind of like, hmm, that's really interesting. This would be the monster, a white monster. Yes, really. I don't know if people knew this about white monster, but essentially, not always, it turns out, uh, this is weird, what I was going to tell you was, when these leaves come in, they turn, they, they, you know, they start off a white colour, and as you can probably see, it's not yellowing, it's going to turn like a minty colour and it's going to fade to green, right? Now, I thought that's how they worked. I thought that's how they worked, that's how everyone says they work. Sometimes the colour hangs around, sometimes it doesn't, it's a bit bizarre. This one here is left behind kind of like a variegation, hopefully you can see this, I know my camera loves to just not show you things. So you've got that there, you've got this leaf here that is sort of wearing, you know, wearing down to green in color because it was whiter when it came out. You have this one that has minimal variegation. It's got a little bit of, little bit of problematicness there on the end. And then you have this one, which is like the oldest leaf, literally, that has stayed white. So if you can make sense of that, be my guest, because this is not performing how I expected it to. Now, I have more than one of these. I think a lot of them are still like attached to rather large leaves, so I haven't pulled them out. I definitely have more than one of these. I have two or three, maybe, because I've been doing some propagations. You might be able to tell if I show you in the pot. Maybe you can see this has come off a big stump. So this is actually a propagation. Make it make sense, guys. Make it make sense, because I tell you something. You can actually see something weird going on on this leaf here, this new one. Hopefully you can get it on camera. So it's turning green, but there are bits at the top of the leaf here that look like they're going to stay white. I don't know. See if you can see what I'm talking about. If I put that right up. Can you see what I'm saying? There's some sections sort of around here and here where it looks like it's just going to stay, even though the rest of it is fading down. Do you get what I'm saying? It's really random. I don't really get why this is occurring, but I thought I'd show you it. What I will do in the future is I will try and pick out the other ones and I might just pick them all out and I'll just show you them all. And we'll try and work out together what the hell is happening because this was a new one for me some point last year because we're in 2023 now. I need to keep remembering that. Um, I got these at some point in last year and obviously I've been propagating them. Told you, look, I'm very skeptical about how it works. We will see how we go. But that's how it appears to be working so far. So this particular one, it sort of seems almost to have like ghost-like qualities. So I, it comes in white, it turns green. I don't know if it's just this particular specimen, but it also seems to have variegation in it as well. And sometimes it stays there. Case in point, you know, this leaf here and this baby leaf here that you can actually see has a ton of variegation in the actual stem. This one does as well, but if I can just show you, hopefully it will actually focus. Can you see what I'm talking about? Have I like misunderstood this plant? Because it's definitely white monster. It says literally here, this is Ben's writing, but it literally says, if that focuses, it says white monster. So make it make sense, guys. Make it make sense. I don't know. I don't get it. It's really interesting though, because every leaf is doing something a little bit different. So I'll keep the updated on that, but I couldn't really not show you that because that's just weird, isn't it really? Weird. Now listen, a lot of us are over variegated syngonium, but I actually am not. And I still have a lot of them. I don't actually tend to propagate from them to sell or anything. I have literally a good tray full of yellows. Whites, I think went a long time ago. We did have some white up at the back of the shop. I probably have one or two, actually. I've got a couple of white variegated syngoniums. The yellow kind of held its value for longer, so I have a few of them. But I want to pick out this one. This one, fun fact, has actually come from my feed experiment. So I thought it looked so pretty, I had to show it to you. I just wanted to show it to you because I just feel like 
a lot of Syngonium just got lost, really. And I don't know why, you know, because they grow really quick. And I won't bore you. I know I say this all the time. They grow really quick. They propagate well. They're pretty tough. They can take over watering. They can take under watering. You can grow them in water. You can grow them in liquor. You can grow them in pond. This one's in liquor. It's done brilliantly. This one was grown from just a cutting, by the way, with roots that were probably about a centimeter long, like aerial roots. And it's done brilliantly. If I show you this, you see that there? Focus. It's done really, really, really well. So yeah, this has come out of the feed experiment. So I, I don't know if I told you guys, I pulled them all out maybe two weeks ago now. I took photographs of all my findings, which is good. I depotted them as well. And I took pictures of all the roots, which I did at the start of the experiment. So there is nothing there anymore. But this is one of them. And I want to showcase it because I feel like people have forgotten about these. And it's not the only syngonium I feel like people have forgotten about. Let me tell you that because let me get it. This guy. Do we remember this guy? What happened to this guy? This is Syngonium Pink Splash. And this particular one here is looking very, very nice. This is actually also one from the feed experiment. That looks like an old leaf. That could probably come off. Can you see that? But I wanted to show this again because, again, I feel like people have forgotten about these. These are really affordable. I'm pretty sure, guys, the yellow ones will be more expensive than these ones. But these are really affordable. Um, last time I checked, they were... Oh, I don't know, maybe 20 pounds or something. It's not a lot. Now, don't get me wrong. In certain situations, that's a lot for a houseplant. I'm not saying it's not. But for something that isn't readily out in garden centers, and it's, it's kind of like that level above garden center, but not into like, this is, you know, getting serious. It's kind of at that level. And I wanted to put it on camera again because it, one, it looks quite nice. I don't know how pink it's looking. Yeah, it's looking decent. Hopefully any of my camera effects don't de-pink that. They might. But I just wanted to show you it because they're still around. They're really nice. If you want to learn how to propagate plants, this is a good one. The yellow one is good too. Don't get me wrong. But I think I have one more Syngonium to show you and I may as well do them in order at this point. We're kind of on a roll, are we not? I'm going to show you because I'm preferring it to both of these. And I think it's more common than both of the ones I've just shown you. It's more common than this. It's more common than the yellow. It's sort of a big tuft of Syngonium that I kept back from myself. And I'm kind of loving it. So I'll show you that now. If you're looking for a fast and reliable way to create and run your own website, you should give Squarespace a try. Squarespace is an all-in-one solution for creating your own website from scratch using a variety of modern and sleek templates. They're really customizable so you can have a website that's unique to your brand in no time. I've used Squarespace now for well over a year for the Red Plant Shop and it's working really, really well for me. If you don't quite know where to start, you can always use the inbuilt wizard which will guide you towards the recommended templates for the kind of website you would like to make. Once you have your selected template, follow the instructions on screen and you'll be set up in no time. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for an online store or maybe you're working on your own blog, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you very much, Squarespace. And back to the video. And I'll show you the roots as well, cause it's quite serious. Can you see that? I'm just gonna put that in a catch pot. That's all I'm doing, by the way. That's why they're in these pink pots. It's just to stop me dribbling root on myself. But this here, and as I say, it is a bit of a bush cause it was just a few sprigs of Syngonium that sort of got collected up from some buckets when they're being sold. Sometimes I do that in the shop. I'll grab a little tuft of something back for myself and I either will or won't keep it. Maybe I might keep it, I might pot it, I might do something with it. Or I might just sell it in six months and probably get it again. So it's a really good thing to do. But at some point, I have grasped a load of, and I think this is Syngonium, is it Wendlandii? And I've kept it and it's just grown out. This is why it looks kind of, you know, this two-prong because there's more than one chunk in there. But can we just take a second to realize how pretty this is? Can you see that? See, I actually really think that that's nicer than the other two. I don't know what it is. I quite like the more simplistic plants sometimes. And this is lovely. For those of you that want to know, it's it's kind of velvety. It's not like tiny little hairs all the leaf. It's not like bristly or anything like that, but it is quite velvety and it's very pretty. And I don't think you'd struggle picking one of these up either right now. I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, and obviously it differs depending on where you are in the world, but I'm pretty sure these are quite affordable, which we love, do we not? So yeah, if you want to get yourself quite a nice bush, then go for one of these. And this is on, again, pretty much neglect in the shop because it just gets to sit in a tray, gets watered when it gets watered, and that's it. So it's looking amazing. And as I say, it is my favorite out of out of literally the three I've just shown you. But put it up to the camera because it looks real cool. That's a nice thumbnail actually for this week. I keep that. 
Yeah. It's nice, isn't it? Can I get you close up to a leaf? There we go. Very, very, very nice. Loving that. I'm pretty sure it's Syngonium Wonderlandii. I don't think it's the other one, which I think is, is it Rayii or something? I think that's slightly more uncommon. I'm not sure. But yeah, love these. If you can get your hands on one, I do actually suggest you do. And it doesn't have to be grown like this. You can actually grow them, by the way, so that they vine down. They will just get smaller, even though these haven't, but I think they've been trying to grow up. You can grow them and trail them if you want, which I might actually try because I've been talking about getting a lot of plants in my house, but I don't want any poles. And I don't really see people growing Syngonium sort of downwards and letting them trail. So maybe this is the one to do it and we'll just see how it goes. Maybe I could do a whole bunch of them and then we'll just see. That's my wall. That's a really loud today. Good Lord. Okay. Right, we'll put him down. The rain is getting so loud as well. Hopefully my noise cancelling works well. Hopefully. You cannot hear it. Look at the state. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Right, the next plant has been chosen, literally guys, because it's cute. There's no other reason. It's not particularly attractive looking, but it's, it's, oh my God, it's just adorable. I've just got to show you it. I walked past and I was like, oh my God. So I'm now about to show you a variegated Raphidophora tetrasperma, and it has two leaves on it uh, that are the old leaves that are almost reverted actually, but the variegation has come back. But what I've got is I've got tiny little leaves, like literally this big right? But they've got variegation on it, but they're fully formed. Oh my God, it's so cute. Let me just show you because it's just, oh my God. Can you imagine, by the way, can you imagine for a second if this plant actually stayed like that? Because I honestly think it's going to get to a point, and I know that this is happening for some other plants, like I think you can get the Monstera compactor and stuff, which is like a, a dwarf version of a Monstera deliciosa. That's really cool. Would love one of them. But imagine if we could start doing this, right? Because I know we have a lot of TC plants coming out, so there is a chance that we can find stuff. But if this stayed dwarf, which it won't, by the way, it won't. How amazing would this be? Just look at how adorable that is. Oh my God. I have small hands, by the way, if that helps. But look, they're like fully formed. So yeah, the old two leaves are here and here, and I can't see anything on them really. Just show you them there, so it's not the easiest to show you, but because the camera likes to focus on my face. But they are just so cute. Like as as a collective, it looks a bit shit, right? It does. But I just had to point out these two. And of course, we have some variegation back, which is great. Look at them. Ooh. Literally that was it. I just had to show you it. Because obviously it's not on the whole, it's not a pretty plant, but that was really cute. So I thought I'd show you it. Next up, we have a plant that I've been propagating for a little while, actually. You guys do know what it is. You've seen it before. It's based off a more, I, I almost want to say common now, maybe uncommon slash common plant that we have known and loved for a long time. It grows like wildfire. It's ridiculous. It's literally like a number one beginner plant. Probably the number one beginner philodendron I would probably ask people to get. That is the green version of this plant. So this bad boy here, hopefully you can see he looks quite nice. He's growing really, really, really nicely. This is, what is it? Philodendron Burley Marks. I think it's going as mint. I can't remember. I can't remember as of recording this. I feel like it's going as mint. It, it is minty. It's ever, I mean, it depends really. That there, that's an older leaf. Can you see? Hopefully it focuses. That is what I would call mint. They do come out, obviously, when the leaf is developing. This is a brand new leaf. They come out a little bit warmer toned, but they do fade down. But, oh, there's a lovely leaf down here. I've just seen it. Let me just show you this, because this is really cute as well. Very, very nice. I do predict that these plants are going to do very well, generally, in the community, in the industry, whatever, on the market. I'm not thinking today at all. These are my first videos back in 2023. So I do think they're going to do well, based off, and I've said this before, based off the plant that's underneath. So based off philodendron burly marks because they're so tough, they propagate well, blah, 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 blah. You've heard it all before. So I think they're gonna do quite well. I mean, you can even see on this one, the plant is already split. So it's technically split closer to four. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this. I'll have to lift that up. Can you see there? That's how quickly this plant multiplies. This is taken from a cutting and you can already see there, it's split. 
that's how quickly this thing propagates. These do have a value attached. As of recording this video, I actually don't know what it is, guys. I do not know what it is. I bought them to propagate and sort of get a bit of a supply going. And I haven't looked since. I've just focused on propagating them. So let me know if you think these are quite nice. Because I think the general consensus is that they are nice. I don't know. But I really, really like it. And I can confirm it's exactly the same as you might expect as the regular philodendron burly marks. And the same thing as the variegated, which nine times out of ten is yellow. So if you like that plant, but you're a bit sick of the yellow, you could always consider switching to this instead. People just have a thing about yellow, right? I don't mind. I think it depends on the plant, but it, I don't know. It really depends. But that's him anyway. I want to show you him because I have a couple of them and they're looking about as nice as this. So let me know what you think if it takes your fancy. I know a lot of people don't love the way these grow when they get going. They get to be very bushy and what's happening here just keeps happening. It's... You either love it or you hate it, really, but I like him, and I think he's very cute, and he's doing very well. In fact, they all are. Haven't even had problems with reversion. It's actually been really, really decent, so... There we are. We'll put him down, and we'll grab something new. Right. You will have to excuse the state of this next plant, because this is one of the plants in this list that isn't necessarily pretty as a whole bit like the Raphnophora tetrasperma, but I'm very, very happy with certain aspects of it, so I wanted to show you it. The plant itself, by the way, is pretty, as in, like, the, the plant, the type, the whatever. But this specimen... I'll let you decide if it's pretty, actually. I've got a little bit of soil on the leaves, so don't judge any of the dirty leaves. As I say, this is not in the best of states. You might remember this. I have a couple of these. I think I have this one. I have one upstairs that is not doing as well as this one, actually. Clearly, the conditions required for this are the ones down here and not the ones up there. But this here, I do believe, yes, I know, I know, can you see what I'm saying? It's not, it's not ideal there. This is Skindapsis Platinum, I think. It's not Silver Hero, I think there is a difference, um, but I think the Silver Hero, oh my goodness, I can't remember, guys. Is it not darker down the middle? I can't remember. But I wanted to show you this because it's been down here, so it's been in much, much more of a wetter environment and a cooler environment, environment I'd say. I can't speak today. Um, it's been fed with my feet occasionally, which has clearly done it very well because it's just sized up. But it, it's looking so gorgeous. I have to show you it because it is very, very beautiful. Hopefully you get that on camera without me being there. Can you see that? It's very, very pretty. All it needs, guys, all it needs is it needs chopping and propagating. And that would make a really beautiful houseplant. It's clearly very, very tough. I know a lot of skindapsis are. I find this skindapsis grows reasonably quickly. I have other ones around the unit that are different things, doing different things. And I haven't seen them in a little while. They're obviously being moved. They get Stuff gets moved in here all the time when I'm not in. So I will find them for you at some point. But I'm pretty sure this, this maybe medium growth. They're slow, but seeing this one and seeing the one upstairs, the one upstairs is a hell of a lot slower. A hell of a lot slower. Let me know what you think of this, but this is honestly one of my favorites, and I would love, 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 love to start propagating this and getting it in the house, because can you see how amazing that is? I appreciate, guys, this is, like, really impossible to show you it, but that's kind of how it looks coming out of the pot, and it goes along like that. Hopefully it focuses, and then that's the new point of growth at the end. But literally, look at him. Just look at him. So that should be Skindapsis Platinum. If you're looking for something similar, I do believe there is a Skindapsis Silver Hero that's basically the same. There's a lot of silvery Skindapsis about. You can get really affordable ones. They're not all silver like this, but if you fancy something pretty silver, then there is a, I think it's the Silver Anne. That's a lot more affordable, a lot more available. But have a look around if you think that you might like Skindapsis because I'm really kind of loving it and I'm loving this one and I'm loving how much it's sized up. That is awesome. Considering it came from a little cutting with hardly any roots, that's done beautifully. So we'll pop him down. Not pretty as a whole, but when you look at individual bits of it, it's pretty. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, the next thing I want to show you, it's kind of a quick update, really, and it, it does look pretty, but I think it's going to get prettier, so this is maybe, maybe cheating a little bit, but I wanted to show you this, because I don't think, I don't think enough people know about it. I believe this is, it's not that, it's not that, yes, it's Philodendron Platinum, and I did pop this up a little while ago, maybe less than a month ago, I thought I'd just show you two things, I'd show you how it's doing, and I'd show you the, just generally, has it worked, has it not worked, so I think it was... Was it in Pond originally? 
So it's only really traveled from pond to pond. I know it could have been in liquor, but it's handled the transition just fine. Hasn't tanked at all. This old leaf is a bit crap, but I think it was anyway. This is what it looks like. It's just looking a little bit better than what it was when I showed you, I think. It's sort of colored down a little bit. So this plant should look a little bit blue toned, not to the point of the skin dapsis or anything like that, like nowhere near that level, but it should just look a little bit a little bit bluey, a little bit icy. So hopefully you can detect that in this. Which one is better? This looks a little bit more blue tone, this leaf here. Yeah, I feel like you can see that a little bit more. Uh, not quite your average green, not quite your average green. So that's him in this little pot. He won't be in it for long. He's climbing at the moment. He does look like he's gonna continue climbing. I, I mean, I'm looking at this. And I can't see how that's going to turn into anything other than a climber, can you? Personally, no. I feel like no. This is a new leaf, so I thought I'd just show you how they come out, which is a little something, something like this. Not immediately obvious that it's going to cool off and have that bluey green, like cyan kind of tint to it, but he will. He'll cool off. To be honest, the, this side that's been unfurled first is obviously turning before this side. You can sort of see it on this side, I just don't think the camera's going to make it super obvious. But that's him. Really want to show you him because he's very, very cute. And I don't think people know about him that much. I don't really see them poking around. Again, not saying, oh my God, super rare. I'm just saying that they're not really around. Just because something isn't around much doesn't necessarily mean it's rare. It really depends what you want to think of when you use the word rare. Is it rare botanically, i.e. how many are in the wild? Is it rare commercially or is it just, I don't know, something else? <laughs> I can't think. But yeah, so they're not around much, but I'm sure you can find one if you wanted one. I will keep you updated on this because I feel like this is only going to get better because this one was blasted a little bit under the light. So it's not looking as nice and deep as it could, but I'll let you know. I think I have one more up there that is still getting blasted by the lights. So that needs to come down. But yeah, I'll keep you updated on this. But so far, so good. It's looking cute. Really, really cute houseplant. And there he is. The next thing I want to show you is I picked up two of them just to show you that, you know, they can, they can grow like wildfire basically. And I've got more of these. I think I've got maybe two or three more of these, but these are the best specimens in all honesty. But I had to show you these because I feel like I haven't put these on camera for a little while. Do you remember when these were about, oh my goodness, I think in COVID or really early COVID, maybe even prior to that, one of these would cost you Oh, I don't know, because it, it went by node, right? It ended up being like a thousand a node. This is Monstera adansonii variegate, by the way. If you didn't know, you can get green versions of these in garden centers nearly anywhere. But it's the variegation that is uh, rare, whatever. Except it's not that rare. I won't go into it because I know people will get very bored and very irritated. But essentially, they're everywhere. You will not find them in garden centers, but you will always find someone that could probably sell you one if you want one. You can probably find them this size now as well. I'd be quite happy selling something this size. I don't mind, it's fine. But yeah, so at one point or another, if I just show these kind of next to each other, turn that, one point or another, each node was round about a thousand. So if there's one, two, three, four, five, six visible nodes on this one, I think that would be nearly 6,000. You might be able to sell it for four uh, at the lowest, something like that, again, this one, you could probably, because there's more aerials on this one, I don't know if you can see that or not, you could probably sell that for a bit more because the propagations are a bit more safe, if you know what I mean, they're more likely to do well. This one's got a little bit too much variegation, although there was a period of time where I don't think people cared about that. But yeah, I just want to show you these. They're doing really well. They're growing really nicely. You can still find them around, and I do recommend them. They're quite pretty plants, especially if you get a whole plant of them. I might even do it, guys. I might even do it. I might steal this one because I don't want something that variegated. And I might just let it be. I might just make a cute little plant of it in the house. Either that or the Raphidophora. I'm not sure. But yeah, really, really cute. They have a big, big timeline on the internet, but if you want one, you can probably find one. And that concludes my pretty plants or surprising plants for this week. 
Please let me know what you think of any of them. Are there anything that you think, well, oh gosh, I haven't seen that in a long time. I kind of like that. Or are all these plants kind of just dead to you? You're just sick of looking at them. Let me know what you think about these because these are genuinely just things I found in the shop that I thought, hmm, that looks really pretty. So without further ado, thank you very much for watching this video. If you'd like to see any more of my content, then please feel free to subscribe. Oh, and like this video and give it a thumbs up. That's it for today, guys. I will love you and leave you, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.